first of all, we'd like to do introduction of the committee members and staff. So I'd like to uh, start on the other end with Ryan, please, or rather, uh, Don, you want to start out and introduce yourselves? Thank you, everybody. Does any of the members have any conflict of interest with any of the items on the agenda? Okay, very good. Then we'll move on to the minutes. Um, next item is to approve uh, the minutes of the Planning Commission from August 27th of 2019. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to items for discussion and possible action. Item 3.1 is an additional units and variance application by Marshall Sign to install a new Lakeshore Technical College projecting sign at 1320 Niagara Avenue. Turn it over to Steve. All right. Um Katie Schultz is here from Marshall Sign, as well as, I'm sorry, ma'am, from LTC. Thank you. Um, as the Plan Commission is aware, uh, Paul, Weaver, Paul Weaver has um, remodeled and redeveloped 1320 Niagara Avenue, which is the old central tool house, which had um, boat doctors and the Harmony Bar. Um, one of the tenants there that is presently operating, I believe, as the school year started, is LTC. And uh, one of the things that LTC is looking for is a projecting sign. Um, you can see basically on the plans that you have before you that uh, they're taking a look at that projecting sign. It's 56 square feet. It's internally illuminated, and they're looking at installing it on the southwest corner of the building. The idea is so that people driving north and south on North 14th Street, students, staff, uh, visitors, would have the opportunity to see this internally lit uh, projecting sign to guide them to this new uh, space that LTC is using. So there were a couple of variances with the projecting sign that it's 56 square feet, um, ordinance uh, is 12 square feet, and that it's internally illuminated, and again, um, LTC has proposed this because they're just looking to make sure that their students and others uh, have the opportunity to see the sign um, as they drive on North 14th Street. So staff was recommending approval of the proposal subject to the conditions you have before you and the applicants are here as well. Thank you very much for that report, Steve. Does the applicant uh, want to make any remarks? want to make sure that the students see it. It's kind of a busier area of town and it kind of set back a little bit. Yep, we just want to make sure that the <laughs> students can be able to see it and, you know, a busy part of town and pretty much Steve said. <laughs> or are you ready to make a motion? Alder person born? Thank you, and I'll make a motion to approve subject to the conditions. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. One last call for any discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item 3.2. by the um, Food Works Holding to construct a new building addition and to operate a new grocery store at 731 Pennsylvania Avenue. Steve? All right, Stefano Viglietti is here. 
and um, what we're taking a look at today. Uh, there's also some neighbors here, I believe, for this one as well, Mayor. Thank you. Um, taking a look at uh, the building located at 731 Pennsylvania Avenue. This was previously the professional building that had the uh, optometrist and chiropractor in the, in the building. Um, uh, uh, Traditoria Stefano is a restaurant group consisting of Traditoria Stefano, El Retrovo, Field of Fork, and the Duke of Devon. And over the years, they have dramatically expanding their baking operations as well as their in-house butchery. Um, they've truly outgrown their current facilities and also were in need of additional parking. So when this facility came up, it was something that they had a lot of interest in. Um, the purchase of these properties was the answer and they were initially going to just build a commissary but decided after some research that a larger need existed and they decided that Sheboygan really needed a, a small specialty grocery store that is unlike, unlike any other in the community right now. Um, in addition to the commissary, the new store will offer an amazing bakery, old style local source butcher counter with a burning rotisserie, fresh fish counter featuring many of the same world class items they use in their restaurants, a coffee shop and roaster, as well as a truly wide variety of grab and go products for the ex uh, ever expanding downtown population. I'm sure Stefano will be able to better speak to that than I can in terms of his products. They're also looking at um, the basics of a grocery store, your, your basic needs needs, as well as uh, beer and wine. Um, we will, in fact, be a full-service grocery store, but focused on the rapidly growing demand for carryout of fully cooked and partially prepared items done at a very high level using the best local Wisconsin products. The building that faces A Street will house the bakery, um, and inside that steaming window, you'll see the bakers rolling croissants and making baguettes. The main entrance will be on Pennsylvania Avenue and will be accessed on foot or uh, from our parking lot. There would be overhead doors as well as opening windows on Penn Ave that would allow us to move produce in items outside like the old days. Um, and they will have the building addition on the north side of the building allowing them to maximize the, the property as well as increase some of the storage. So the project basically is the conversion of that space into a grocery store, deli, bakery, um, the existing footprint is about 6,200 square feet. Uh, there's a two-story addition that's 3,500 square feet, about 1,700 square feet per floor. Uh, the existing building will remain with the new building addition added between the North Wall and Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, existing parking area will remain, which is about a 32 uh, space parking uh, lot. There are, the pro uh, property is made up of two parcels, so they will be required to combine those parcels into one parcel. Um, they eventually will come in with some signage and, and can work with staff uh, on that. But, uh, you know, as, as Chad can probably speak to, you know, the city has been working on a downtown grocery store for many years. And to have someone like uh, Stefano, uh, uh, go ahead and, and proceed forward with a project like this is something that as a community we're really excited about. Um, you see the result of some of the demands and services on some of the apartments and the, the different needs and how the shops are filling up. And this is just a real exciting opportunity to have a, a, a well-run grocery store and butcher shop and deli, you know, come and, and come to downtown and just, again, establishing Sheboygan as an exciting place to live, work, shop, and play. So uh, staff was recommending approval of the proposal subject to the conditions that you have before you. Steve, thank you very much for that report. Stefano, would you like to add anything to his report? I've told that some people don't say anything because they're coming out of Channel 1 and just saying, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to chat with what we want to. Go ahead, I mean, you've please. On what, you basically read what I wrote for the most part, you know? Um, yeah, so we really, we, we've kind of run out of space, and we started to... It's, I don't want to get too geeky on the baking side of it, but when you bake natural leavened breads, instead of using yeast, you instead of something taking three hours, it takes four days. So we have we need a lot more space, a lot more cooler space. It makes our breads more digestible, all that kind of stuff. So long story short, we need to grow our butchery operation, our bakery operation, the support of the restaurants through the commissary. And I sat on the chamber for a few years, and I kept hearing these talks that, gosh, is, is, is Sendix going to come to Sheboygan? I heard Sendix might come. They're gonna, we're trying to get someone to come here. So... 
uh, I just think that I, I kept sitting there going, gosh, I think we could do this. You know, we, we seem, I think we're equipped. And so we've been traveling for years. We've been out to San Francisco. Some of those pictures show we went worked at Buy Right Grocery Store, which is the highest grossing per square foot grocery store in San Francisco. Got to work in their commissary, spend time with their, in their store, go out some places in New York. We worked at a few places there. And I just kept thinking as you, as you saw grocery stores kind of shrinking and middle aisles just becoming obsolete. So now I think an 8,000 square foot store is kind of right again. And I feel like we've come sort of, we've gone from small to really, really big to coming back. To, and I think you need both and there's a place for both. And we want to be the one that provides that sort of downtown, old world experience, come in and be able to come up to a counter and work with someone down the line, get some meat, get some fish, get some things, get some breads and bakery and kind of work with one sort of personal shopper. Kind of like you used to go to the old Lick Keys market and kind of shop up and down the counter like you used to do as a kid. So we sort of want to bring that back. And I just feel like the downtown is, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, I want to just, I want to compliment the city in general and just this building, by the way, is phenomenal. But just the way the city feels to me, I've been here my whole life since 1970. And I think where we're at right now is pretty impressive. And I just want to, I want to continue to be able to grow my businesses. We were being strangled by parking. We now finally have a little room to breathe with a few spots there. I still wish I had 30 more. But I think we all wish that probably in downtown right now, but at least we have that problem, which means we're doing well. So I want to continue to grow and to bring something that I feel we could really use. And I, I have been working with you guys on the design and stuff, and I feel like we're at a good point, and we're ready to go ahead and grow for the sake of ourselves and the community. Thank you very much for your enthusiasm and excitement. Are there any neighbors to speak? Thank you. Thanks, Stefano. Good work. It'll be efficient. It'll be classy. Good work. Jim Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I was just wondering with your parking stalls there, whether you anticipate some of those would be like short-term parking if people are ordering a meal that's pre-done that they can just come and pick it up and then, you know, zip in and zip out. Great question. That's one of the, you're right to the point on that because we've got, that's one of the big things we want to do. I don't want to probably play around with delivery. That just scares me. But curbside pickup, one of the biggest things we're going to do is be pulling proteins off that rotisserie each night. So you might call us on a Monday night and say, I need chicken, I need roasted potatoes, and I need vegetable, whatever the vegetable of that day is for a family of six. Pickup is between, we'll say, five and six. You pull up. I'm assuming we'll develop some sort of a thing that your phone will, you know, that's for the young people 30 years younger than me to figure out. And we will get some sort of system that allows you to come up, pull up, be able to stop, park, either have your things brought curbside or run in and grab them, maybe grab a couple of other things. But we also intend to even do some shopping for people and be able to come out. So yeah, we're looking at having some short-term spots either there. We even talked about possibly the need for that and maybe curbside on the street to look at some changes there, which is something we did discuss a little bit about having some spots that are more short-term there and allowing people to come up at certain, maybe it's a certain time of the day that that exists. Possibly, so we would certainly work with, if, if, if you don't want to do that all the time, if, you, if, if there was a window you give us to do that, we would look at that too. But we think it'll be a big part of our business. Thank you. Dave Hoffman. Uh, Stefano, I'm just curious, uh, what do you have in mind for the second floor? Well, honestly, I hate to say it, I think it's gonna be storage. I'm, we're so tapped out on storage. So I looked at a warehouse too, and I was, I was close to trying to do two projects, and my wife took me by the scruff of my neck and said, you will not do a warehouse and a store downtown at the same time, because we're supposed to be retiring in 10 or 15 years. I said, okay, got it. So um, we, I would rather have a party room or a venue. Depending on budget, Dave, we, may, we are definitely building 1,700 feet of storage with an elevator to be able to put pallets of things up there, which allows us to buy a little better. But if the numbers are right for me, I may make an attempt at trying, and that's not in this yet, but to build a room off of that upstairs, possibly over the roof area to be a party room, which would have a view of Lake Michigan, and would allow us to have a beautiful venue for, not big groups, maybe 70 to 80. I don't like big, big things. I like smaller like that. So that might be something we look at doing, but I don't know if the money will be there or not. I'm not quite sure if I'll be able to. Thank you, Stephanie. So for now, storage. What a, what a great use of that uh, space. Uh, for those yeah. of us who remember uh, Tim Higgs, this is, uh, this is a great use. I went there for hot chocolate after my dentist appointment every time and got marshmallows on top of my hot chocolate. And... <laughs> Thank you. Chad Pelichek. 
to answer Alderman Bourne's question we, and to reference what Stefano said in our discussions, we did talk about uh, the street parking on Pennsylvania and coming to the council later on with a request to um, do some short-term parking in that area. We asked them to get the place built first and then we'll shake that out. But yes, our intent would be uh, to allow for some uh, pull-up parking and grab products and leave from there. Thank you. Uh, looking for a motion? I'll make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendation. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, one last call for any additional discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much, Stefano. Congratulations. Good luck with the project. Item 3.3 is a conditional use and variance application by 575 Riverwoods Partners LLC to construct site improvements to operate a multi-tenant facility from 1213 Pennsylvania Avenue, the former Mayline facility. Steve? All right, uh, John Paré is here from Phoenix Investors and I believe there's a number of neighbors here for this one as well. Um, 575 Riverwood Partners, which is Phoenix Investors, is proposing to operate a, a multi-tenant facility from 1213 Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, the building was previously occupied by Mayline Safeco, which used the property for manufacturing furniture and office supplies with uh, an accessory use of uh, storage and warehousing. And the applicant is looking to obtain a conditional use permit to uh, continue some of that uh, potential manufacturing and warehousing. Uh, right now, they're looking at uh, tenants who could potentially fill this industrial space for those purposes. And so there's no formal tenants at this point in time, but the conditional use would give them the opportunity to work with um, one or two tenants that may be, have interest in, in a similar use as to what was taking place there previously. Um, as of now, they're still finalizing plans for some new docks and some exterior facade um, improvements. Most of the main site features will remain and the only modification of the building or site is to add four loading docks on the north side of the building. So basically there's um, four loading docks on that side at this point in time, but they have some difficulty in terms of getting larger semis in there. So they're um, going to be demolish, uh, demolishing the um, old, oldest portion of the building that is closest to uh, Pennsylvania Avenue and, and that, on that picture right there that Chad has, that's the section that says Mayline Co. as you would take a peek at that so you can see where that is. That section of the building is to be demolished. And then uh, there's presently four docks on that side of the building and what they'll be doing is um, creating four new docks on the existing section of the building that will now be exposed when that's demoed. Um, other than that, um, the current uh, square footage is 141,000 square feet, and after the demolition, it'll be 132,000 square feet. So it's likely that uh, if there were two tenants, that they would be approximately 70,000 square feet uh, each. Some of the uh, improvements that they're looking at is freshening up the exterior of the building. Some of the plans that uh, Chad was showing, essentially they'll be repairing everything back to the original and then painting all the panels white to improve the appearance of the building. Um, let's see, in, in spring of 2020, they'll be taking a look at some of the site uh, as far as parking and landscaping and grading, and they may be doing some additional work at that point in time. Um, there is uh, a couple of comments from staff. There's uh, a couple of uh, uh, signs that still refer to Mayline, so we'd want just the applicant to remove that signage uh, on there. Um, there's a couple of van doors on the west side of the building um, that have some canopies that are in poor shape. I'm assuming those are all to be removed or repaired. Um, there's some discussion with the applicant about the fence along Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, it's a little weathered. I think there was some discussion that it could be removed um, or repaired. Either one of those would be fine. Uh, uh, presently, the property is three parcels, so we'd be requiring the, the applicant to combine those into one lot. 
and then if there were any future improvements to the site in terms of parking or things of that nature, applicant may need to uh, come back to the plan commission to address those uh, needs. Other than that, staff was recommending approval of the request uh, subject to the conditions you have before you. I can answer any questions. The applicants are here and then uh, there are some neighbors here on this one as well, Mayor. Thank you very much, Steve. Would the applicant like to make any uh, further remarks on the project? Please step to the podium. Hi there, uh, John Perret from Phoenix. Uh, can you hear me all right? Okay. Yeah, so essentially, uh, Steve kind of covered most items. Uh, we purchased the building a little over a year ago and it's, uh, it's been in pretty rough shape. I mean, our, uh, we, Phoenix Investors, the, the company I represent, we kind of own buildings coast to coast and our staple is kind of uh, finding these buildings that are in rough shape and communities you know, that are great around it. And, just kind of breathe a new life in them. And uh, essentially what we're doing to this building, we just got approved from the architectural review board to kind of, um, you know, refresh in the whole outside of the building as far as the facades on each side. And then, uh, yeah, the docks have just been an issue. We've been trying to market the building uh, to, you know, we were hoping to land a manufacturing tenant, but a lot of it's gonna be probably warehousing and distribution, but uh, that older <coughs> building that we plan on demolishing the grade, or the finished floor level is higher than the rest of the building. So that's become an issue as far as some of these tenants that have specialty product and whatnot. And uh, just uh, that building was built at a different time. So the configuration of the docks was, wasn't made for the size of trucks that they have nowadays and the kind of uses that it'll be used for. Uh, and you know, in the future, as Steve also mentioned, we do plan on uh, taking a really good look at the site uh, and working with your landscape division and coming up with a good plan as far as uh, you know, breathing new life into the, the uh, site there as well. Cause there are a lot of invasive species that have come and, Things have been overgrown and the maintenance has just been kind of poor over the years. So uh, overall, we're just trying to improve the site and you know make it more marketable to bring new tenants to your guys' city. Thank you very much for those comments. Commissioners, any discussion? Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Please step to the podium then. And just your name and address, please, and then your comments. My name The only one with a yard there. It's t beautiful yard, and all of a sudden they come and said that we're trespassing. And our house was built in 1912, and we took it. We moved in there October 1st, 1990, and we've been carrying it, taking care of it all these years, planting flowers, trees, and now all of a sudden we don't know what's going to happen to it. They got signs saying no part when Mayline was there, no sign, you know, parking between signs because they were take parking where we could go in our parking area where we once had a garage, but it collapsed so we tore it down. And we just got done only a few months ago putting a new slab and a new shed on there. And now all of a sudden they're saying we're trespassing. What's gonna to happen to my yard? We're the only ones with a yeah, yard back there and it's a beautiful yard. yard. John, did you wanna to reply to that? <coughs> Please come up. <coughs> yeah, so I mean, I can't talk to the, the legal side of things. I know that there was uh, an agreement between them and Mayline back in the day, um, cause they actually have uh, no parking signs that give them access through our site, but you know, essentially you're driving right through a truck route and uh, that didn't really seem safe you know, to us, especially when we have new tenants in the future. And when we, uh, when we plotted this, the site, you know, as far as uh, having a surveyor come out there, uh, it did encroach a little bit and uh, you know, I don't know where the legal talks are gonna go with that. I can't speak on that aspect of things, but uh, I know that you know, once we do start doing these site improvements down the road that you know, since those abutting zoning districts, we're gonna have to do some sort of buffer there as it is. So it's gonna, you know, come into play at some point, either now or, you know, once we start doing site improvements. We even got papers that said that we have- Please use the mic. We have an easement to go to where our garage was. Because at first they said we didn't have one and all of a sudden we went to the municipal building and some ladies helped us and I got pictures of it on my phone and copies of it saying we had that easement to go to where our garage was. We're the only ones that have that. Chad? 
So I think this is a this is really an issue between the property they owners. Have this, ma'am, just a minute, ma'am, just a minute. This is a civil matter between property lines between the two entities. That's we've been advised by our city attorney's office in the past that this is really a property line issue, and this has to be worked out between the two of you. Um, you know whether Mayline allowed this to happen in the past or not. You know that we don't know My that. My husband but, talked to some surveyors there. So I think, you know, I, the representative is here. Their legal counsel has been working on this. I think, you know, that's the way it's going to have to be worked out between, you know, if you have an attorney, your attorney and their attorney, but this is not a matter that's going to be able to be solved at this meeting tonight. Thank you very much for your comments. We appreciate okay, it. You. Sorry we can't give you an answer to your question at this time. Uh, Jerry? Um, before you sit down, just what are your thoughts along the uh, Penn Avenue side with the fence, the fencing? So uh, there is a wood fence right there mm -hmm. uh, as existing. And when we when we had some of the representatives from, from your side out on the site, you know, they said the, the fence looks all right. Maybe we just paint it. But um, additionally, behind that, there's a bunch of, uh, you know, overgrown area. Mm -hmm. Our plan would be to, you know, remove all that and work with your landscape division to come up with a good plan that, you know, both parties agree on that will, you know, improve the aesthetics on that side of the building. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Were there any other neighbors that wanted to speak to this issue? Okay. Commissioners uh, looking for a motion. Marilyn. I just encourage you to figure this out because you should be good neighbors. So talk to each other. Attorneys talk. But figure it out. Jerry? I'll make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. One last call for any discussion. Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. I'm taking the last one. So I'll take the last one. So Scott Revolinski is here representing High Point Apartments. You'll recall High Point Apartments is the apartment complex that was built on South A Street between Virginia and Jefferson Street, um, someplace down there. Um, that area, when, when they came in for plan approval, it was for 90, all the paperwork had 90 units. They actually built 91 units. They took a building permit out for 91 units, um, but the paperwork for the conditional use permit referenced 90 units, and they're trying to get their, fin their permanent financing in order, and their lenders having a concern over the fact that it says 90 units. So um, we said that we would just approve, we would just recommend an amendment to the conditional use permit that was originally approved, uh, upping the units from 91 units to the 90 units, so we'd be looking for approval in the minutes for that. Oh, um, I, I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any further discussion on the Is, motion? He would like to speak. I would like him to go first, if you want. May I request that we make it? Yes, sir. Oh. You, you got to pick up the, the microphone there. Um, this is Scott Revolinsky. I'm one of the developers. How do you get to the lectern? Uh, my question is, can we make it, can we make a motion to approve it rather than just make it public and then have the Was was the 92, so the 91 units are on the plans for building inspection. The additional unit, this 92nd unit, is that shown on the plans? It is not shown on the plans. That's what I'm asking for. How can we make it through the minutes so that if we do come back, we'll have right on my understanding of anyway, but if we do come back in your I can 
I would say let's leave it at the 91 and then at the time that that moves forward we'll we can address it at that way that way our conditional use permit matches what the building permit is okay Scott thanks very much Okay, any other discussion? Jerry? Uh, no, actually that was the question okay. I had, whether that was gonna be enough. So I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. Thank Oops, you for that motion. We already have a motion. a motion, Dave and- We have, yeah. we have two motions now. <laughs> we'll go with the first one. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The chair votes aye, motion passes. Jerry? Move to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time today.